1 Timothy 6 and 12, notice this. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Say that out loud, everybody. Fight the good fight of faith. Now, fight is mentioned twice. Hmm? Reckon you're going to need to fight sometime. Mm -hmm. I've had people look at me and uh, years ago, this, this one person I was talking to, and I said, now you're going you're gonna to need to stand up and resist that. And they looked at me and teared up and said, but Brother Keith, I'm not a fighter. I just, that's just not my makeup. I said, well, get used to losing then. Amen. No, <laughs> if you're going to make it, you're going to overcome, you're going to have to fight. Hmm? Not fist fight. Faith fight. Amen. Come on, say it out loud again. Fight, fight. The, good fight the good fight of faith. Of faith. Got any fighters out here I want to see? Yes. Huh? Come on, put them up. Let me, let me see. Can you, can you bring it to bear? Come on, can you, can you stir something up? Because if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto you are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, just like you mentioned, fight twice in the first part of the verse. He mentions confession twice in the last part of the verse. The word profession is the same word translated confession. So a big part of the faith fight is what you say. Hmm? Now, I know this sounds strange to some people. We, uh, we've had visitors come here before, and you can just see it in their eyes. They're thinking, why do y'all keep doing that? Because I'll say, say this. 
say that. Say this. And they'll go, huh? Ah, because that's strange to them. Because they didn't do that at their church. Hmm? They didn't even say amen at their church. You're supposed to be quiet. Well, no, this is not something new. This is not something that some uh, recent preachers came up with or some new doctrine. Jesus has always been the apostle and high priest of our confession, yeah, yeah. of what we say. Does anybody know how you get born again? Confession. Huh? Confession. You believe in your heart, Amen. right? Yes. That Jesus is Lord and you confess with your mouth. Right? You, you confess with your mouth. Your words are vitally important. Jesus works with what we say when it comes from the heart. He works with what we say, whether it's the new birth. And we shouldn't think that when we got born again, got into the kingdom this way, that that's the end of that. No, everything in the kingdom works the same way. The same way you got in is the same way we continue. So he mentions confession in verse 13. He gives an example. I give you charge in the sight of God who quickens all things before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good what? Confession. Is he talking about confession? Yes. What's that got to do with fighting a good fight of faith? Apparently a whole lot, right? Go with me to 2 Corinthians, please. The 10th chapter. 2 Corinthians 10, and you see a description of this, this warfare that he's talking about. There is a war going on, and there is a fight to be fought. And uh, there's a lot of ideas about what that fight is and how to fight it, and not all of them are right. So, in order, for, in order for you to know something is right, in order for something to be scriptural, what do you need? Scriptures. scriptures. If you can't find what you're doing in the scriptures, you really need to check up on it. Hmm? In uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3, he said, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. It's not a flesh fight, it's a spirit fight. It's not a fist fight, it's a faith fight. Keep reading. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not natural, they're not physical, but they are real and they're mighty. Just because something's not physical doesn't mean it's not real. Hmm? God is spirit. Yes. Is he real? Yes. He's real. Actually, we're spirit too. Yes. He's the father of spirits. Yes. Hmm? Amen. Yes. You're sitting there right now looking at me through those two windows we call eyes. Yes. And I'm seeing the house you live in. You're on the inside. Yes. Hmm? You're a spirit. And the Lord tears is coming, and you live out your life, and that body dies. Well, you're going to still be you. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And just because that body quit breathing doesn't mean you stopped. You'll slip out of that body like a hand slips out of a glove. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes. Just like that. You know what, I, what else I think you're going to do? I think you're going to go, wow. Yeah. I feel good because you are going to be free from all of the many severe limitations imposed in this curse-filled place. We've never, we've never experienced zero curse. Not yet. From the time we, we, we're used to this because we were born into it. But it's dark. It's death. There's curse everywhere. And soon we're going to find out what it's like to be in total light 
No shadow at all. Total life, no death or curse at all. Your loved ones that have gone on, they've slipped out of their bodies, they experienced this, no way would they come back. No way. No way. Don't feel sorry for them. And don't feel sorry for yourself either. You'll see them real soon. If you live another 50 years, 75 years, it's going to go by so quick, so quick, and you're going to be out of here. But until then, we got a job to do. We're not down here to just twiddle our thumbs and while away the hours. We're down here for a reason. We have come into the kingdom for just this time. Do you believe it? And we are to endure hardness as a good soldier. We are to strap on our gear and we are to take some land. And we are to get the captives out of captivity, get them over into the kingdom and get them free. Do you believe this? And do all of that that we're supposed to do before we leave here. That's what matters. This conflict is not natural, but it is real. And our weapons are not carnal, but they are real and they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, a lot of people have just stopped right here and they've taken those two words, strongholds, and they have concocted all kinds of ideas about what that is and developed a lot of things concerning in their mind spiritual warfare. But that's not even the end of the sentence. That's right. hmm? Pulling down of strongholds, verse 5, casting down what? Imaginations. But see, that's not spectacular enough for a lot of people. They got to turn it into something else. They got to work it up into something else. Casting down what? Imaginations. Are imaginations serious? Can they be a very serious threat to your life? Yes. And most Christians, practically the whole world, and most Christians are not treating these things as serious at all. It's like all thoughts, imaginations, that's not even real. Oh, it's very real. I said it's very real. And it's what the fight is over. Somebody said out loud, casting down. Casting down. Imaginations. imaginations. What, what is an imagination? It's an image. Asian. Hmm? What's an image? It's, it's something in your mind that something you've heard or thought has produced an image. Right? Well, there are lying images. And they are a serious threat. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing into captivity every thought. Everybody say every thought. Every thought. <laughs> Do you think most Christians are doing this? No. Not even close. Which is also an answer as to why so many folks are having so many problems. And losing so many battles. Every thought. Say it out loud. Bringing into captivity. Every thought, Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Obedience of Christ. If you're not doing something with your mind, with what you think, your imaginations and your thoughts, then you are not, you are not fighting at all. You are not even uh, resisting your spiritual enemy and foe. Hmm? A lot's in the Bible about the mind. The mind is the doorway to the spirit. It's how things get in you. Through the ear gate, through the eye gate, through the mind. You know, your mind, spiritually speaking, is a lot like your mouth. 
physically speaking. Hmm? In order for something to become a part of you physically, food, what has to happen? You put it in your mouth. Well, now just because you put it in your mouth doesn't mean it immediately becomes a part of you. Right? What do you do? Well, you chew on it. Well, if you chew on it, what's probably going to happen? Hmm? Swallow it. And when you swallow it, it gets in you. And that, that will become part of you physically. Right? Same thing is true spiritually. If you get something in your mind and you think on it, you meditate on it, you ponder it, you consider it, you imagine it, you're chewing it. Well, what are you chewing? Is it good? Is it going to nourish you? Or is it deadly poison? Hmm? Not all thoughts should be thought. Hmm? Not all imaginations should be considered and pondered. We need, to, we need to recognize. I've told this before, but it'll bear repetition. A fellow told one time of, of him going up on a huge a skyscraper. And he would, I don't know how many floors up he was, but he went over this little balcony and he looked out, boy, the people down looked like little tiny toy cars and little tiny people you, could, uh, you couldn't see them very well. And this thought came to him, why don't you just jump? And he said, you jump. I'm not. And when he said that, it just went off in me and I thought, yes, yes. Yes, that's the revelation so many don't have. He, he realized and dis discerned this is a thought coming to him from outside him, from the enemy of his soul, and this thought, come on, uh, taken into captivity, every thought, this thought, this imagination, what needs to happen to it? Come on, help me out. It needs to be grabbed and thrown down. Is that right? And not allowed to remain in your mind. And spiritual battles are won or lost by this. By what you do or don't do with this. See, a lot of folks, Christians, church going people, they don't know enough even what's going on. They just stood up there and gripped the rail. And thought, jump? What am I thinking about jumping for? Ah, uh, that's the last thing you want to say. You just open the door for more. The enemy will come in and say, because you're suicidal. <laughs> what? No. What are you thinking about jumping? No, well, no. If you're thinking about jumping, you got to be suicidal. No. What are you thinking about jumping? I guess so. Lord, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Do you see? And when it's as simple as this, a thought, I don't, the, even the most holy, the most developed child of God, saint of God, has had thoughts and feelings come to them that were wrong. Don't care who you are, don't tell me you never have, because there's another one right there you're yielding to, another a lot. <laughs> The Bible says different. <coughs> and, and like my father in the faith, Kenneth Hagin, used to say, you can't prevent a bird from flying over your head. You can't prevent a thought from coming to you or a feeling from coming to you. But you can prevent that bird from building a nest in your hair. Right? And you can prevent those thoughts and feelings from taking up residency Come on, are you listening? In your mind and you thinking on them. So when some wrong, stupid, bizarre thought and feeling comes to you, you don't just sit there and panic and go, why am I thinking that? He brought it to you. That didn't come from inside your spirit. That didn't come from the Holy Spirit. It came to you from out here. What's it time to do? Grab that thing, slam it. Come on, are you listening? And say no. I'm not going to do that. Not now. Not ever. Shut up. 
get out of here. Right? So simple. But that is resisting. Hmm? That is resisting the devil. And what will happen? He'll flee from you. Whew, we're making progress. Look at it again, verse 3. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down what? Say it out loud. Casting down imaginations. Is that what you do? Which imaginations? Well, anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Anything that contradicts, right? The truth, which is what God said. Anything that contradicts that, you absolutely reject it and refuse to think it, refuse to talk it, much less act on it. You, you need to say this out loud. Say it out loud. My mind, my mind is my mind. Is my mind. Nobody, Nobody can make me think, make me think something, I don't want to think. something I don't want to think. It's my choice. It's my, choice. My, mind my mind is my mind. Is my mind. You believe that? Yes. You ever heard people say, well, I, I, I just can't help it. And that's a lie. That's not true. That's a lie. And, and, and where people get in trouble is thinking on wrong things because they want to. They like to think about that. That's where you get in trouble. Because you know better, you know it's not right, and if you yield to it and, and purposely continue to think on it, you have opened yourself up to the enemy. You have given place to the enemy, and that's how you get infiltrated, you get infected, and that's how you can lose battles. But even if you've done it many times in the past, today's a new day. Is that right? And you can make a stand right now and say, no, in Jesus' name, no, I cast that down. And if it comes back 300 times in the day, what do you do? You cast it down 300 times in a day. Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, friend, this is not just a small side part of spiritual warfare. This is spiritual warfare. Hmm? No matter what you've heard or done, this is spiritual warfare. Hmm? Right. So I, I thought wicked spirits were, were controlling cities and, and, and controlling people and, and they had strongholds and they need to be cast down. Well, that's, that's true. But how are they doing it? How are they controlling whole cities? Right here. Go with me to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Second Corinthians chapter four. He said in verse three, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has done what? Blinded what? What? What's a huge part of this spiritual warfare? The mind. The mind. That's the battleground. Yes. Hmm? Yes. That's the battleground. He's blinded what? The minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who's the image of God, should shine unto them. Aren't you glad the light shined unto you? Yes. And you saw the truth. Amen. Right? And tell me what the truth did for you. Help me out. The truth has made you free. That's John 8, 32. And actually that word literally means liberate. The truth has liberated you. Well, that's, that's a good thought on the fourth weekend. Huh? 
The truth has liberated you. Come on, say it out loud. The truth has liberated me. Come on, say it again. The truth has liberated me. We, we say a lot of times it has set me free. Well, that's true. The King James says, make you free. I like that. Make you free. Something, something is happening to cause that liberation. Right? Liberated me. How many would testify that you've been saved a while and walking with the Lord, that you are freer today in some things than you were in some time? Man, I didn't, you didn't even let me finish my sentence. I mean, you, you were going. Why? Because the truth that you got a hold of, beginning with the truth that Jesus is Lord, hallelujah, and in everything that's followed, that truth has liberated you, has made you free to the point where you are today. Do you know have you seen, are you walking in all the truth there is to see and know? So what does that mean? You are not as free as you can be. Hmm? Right? There was a point when you didn't see and know and walk in what you're walking in now. And you're freer now in that area than you were then. Is there any more you could see? Hmm? And if that's true, then you ought to love the truth. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which is another way of saying love Jesus because He is the way, the truth, and the life. Keith and Phyllis Moore and Faith Life Church of Sarasota invite you to join us for the 2015 Marriage Enrichment Meeting, June 1st through the 5th. Come and receive answers, help, and strength from the Word of God on marriage and learn how a man and woman can truly experience a flourishing and enjoyable life together based on biblical truths. Whether you are married or desire to be, everyone is welcome. Services begin at 7 p.m. each evening and children's ministry will be provided. For more information, visit our website, flcsarasota.org, or call us at 941-388-6961.